theme of our discussion now is a modern chess openings and what I mean by that is some concrete openings. Now what is the modern opening? What is the meaning of it? Why do they call it modern? Modern is a very temporary term. When you say modern chess opening, it's a temporary term because it changes. For example, uh, openings like Sicilian, King's Indian, and Nimza, they will op always be modern openings. But such openings as uh, center counter or maybe some counter gambits, Albion, they are not modern because they are not used frequently. And from time to time, less known opening becomes more and more uh, popular when someone does some improvement in very well-known line and a lot of followers play the same way and openings become popular. So I want to introduce you one of these openings now and the openings uh, opening is center counter or Scandinavian what they call. Now e4, d5, e takes d. Now this opening introduction, this is for black and queen takes d5 is the one of the most popular moves here maybe the most popular, but move I want to introduce to knight f6, which was relatively popular many years ago and not as popular now. Now knight f6, and we want to take on d5 with the knight and um, have reasonably, uh, you know, good game unless white tries to get the initiative in the early stage of the game. And let's see what white's options are here. White has two different ways to hold on to an extra pawn. One is by playing c4, and the other one is bishop to b5 check. Now let me tell you about this opening, brief history of this opening. This opening was popular, as I mentioned before, many years ago, then there were few games played on a relatively high level and white got an advantage and then it was forgotten. But then I have, uh, well, I, I did a lot of research on it and I think this opening may be as good as number of other openings that are, that, that, um, are um, very popular, such a, as French, Carl Can or uh, well, some variations of Sicilian. Now let's get back to back to the um, continuations and options for white. First is we'll look at c4 move. On c4, black has two options, c6 and e6. And again, what I want to do is I want to introduce you the option that I do recommend. E6 is a pawn sacrifice, which is not the one I recommended, but by no means uh, I'm saying that after E6, it's that the E6 is bad for black. It's possible, but C6 is my suggestion and recommendation. Knight C3. Now, if white accepts the pawn sacrifice, oh, this is known actually very well in... Uh, in a theory that black has a good game simply by playing knight takes e6, knight to f3, then they go e5, and after d3, black goes bishop f5, followed by queen d7, cast along, they get the pawn on d3, and they have better position. So we don't want to spend much time or put much effort in it because this is well, you can pick up the information on that in any opening book. So after c6, most common move is d4, c takes d, knight c3. Now we get to the position of a Karo Khan Panov attack. Now this variation of Karo Khan should be the part of your preparation if you're intending to play center counter. 
So knight c3, e6, and now black goes knight f3, white goes knight f3, black goes bishop e7, and this position where white plays c takes d, and it's a main move. Now, I could only uh, recommend you here one simple continuation. A continuation that unjustly was referred as a bad continuation for black. Main move is knight takes d5, and there is nothing wrong with this move. Knight, knight takes d5 is okay, and if you choose to play knight takes d5, you can use opening books, look at them, look at the reference games, and therefore you're going to be playing knight takes d5. But ed move, by theory, was referred as a bad move for black. And here is the game. Here's the reason why bishop b5 check. Now knight c6, after knight c6, knight e5, white has an advantage. So black goes bishop d7 and queen b3. There was a game played by Alekhine once, and it was a very well-known game, and white won the game, and black had certain problems here. And I agree that, uh, that it looks after castle and actually after queen b3 black castles and white castles or white plays bishop takes d7 first. That's what happened in the game. Knight takes d7 and castling. Here is the position that is the key position that is known that much better position for white. The reason black's d5 pawn and black's b7 pawn are hanging, and if white, black goes knight to b6, notice that queen to b6 loses a pawn after knight takes d5, and if queen takes b3, knight takes e7, check winning the game. So, um, and it's been played in a game knight b6, and after knight e5, that's the Alekhine's game, and uh, white got an advantage and went on to win the game. This position is much better for white, and um, I agree with the evaluation that white is much better, except for one thing. This position is good for black. White has absolutely no advantage in this position. Knight b6 <coughs> is the bad move. The refutation of this variation is move queen to a5. After this move, white has no shadow of advantage. And what can they do? They can play queen takes b7. Or they can play, I don't know, they can play knight e5 if they want to. But after knight e5 and knight b6, black is doing fine because they're going to go bishop b4 next move. Um, well, if queen takes b7, after queen takes b7, black can simply play bishop b4. And now um, position is not that good for white. Let's see what can happen here. Uh, after bishop b4, black is simply threatening to get their pawn back by taking on c3. So white can play bishop d2 or queen c6. Bishop d2 probably. Also white has knight takes d5. Tactical shot. Look, this is very interesting. Now if queen takes d5, queen takes b4, having two extra pawns, and if we play knight takes d5, then queen takes d7. White still has two extra pawns. However, knight takes d5 move loses the game for white. Black is winning by playing rook b8, attacking the queen, 
after knight takes f6, knight takes f6, and queen c6, the only square, rook fc8, black traps white's queen, and white can just resign in this position. So, um, in the, after bishop b4, if white goes bishop d2, then again, black has an advantage. After rook b8, queen c6, notice that every move is forced here. Rook f to c8, attacking the queen, and after queen a4, black has an advantage by playing bishop takes c3, queen takes a5, bishop takes a5, bishop takes a5, and rook takes b2. You can tell that material, material is even, black has more active rooks, and next move may be even knight e4. Black has uh, some advantage in this position. So in this, in a position after queen a5, we just determined that white, it, it's not good for white to accept pawn sacrifice on b5, on b7. But if white does bishop d2 move, for example, then we can play bishop b4. And after a3, queen takes c3, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, and now black can go queen a6 or queen b6. In both cases, they have, they have nothing to worry about. They at least equalized the game. So here is the position. e4, d5, e, d, knight, f6, c4, c6. And again, if d4, c takes d, knight, c3, e6. Now, knight f3, bishop e7, and after cd, again, quick summary of this continuation. Black can play knight takes d5, in which case you can just follow up the uh, recommendations from the books. We cannot uh, analyze everything on this tape, or if you want to play on your own, then e takes d. I think is uh, a very safe continuation for black. Now what happens on bishop b5 check? On bishop b5 check, the best move is bishop d7. And here, white may attempt to hold on to an extra pawn and never give it back. That's not a good idea because only way they can do it if they go bishop c4. Notice that if bishop takes d7 and queen takes d7, c4, we go c6, and it's the same thing, d takes c, knight c6. We just had this position with light square bishops on the board. Without light square bishops on the board, d pawn is even weaker. And so black has no problem after playing e5, bishop c5 and castling long. So the only move that would make sense, and if white wants to hold on to an extra pawn, is bishop c4. Then we play bishop g4, attacking queen and the pawn on d5. And when white plays f3, we should play bishop to c8. And this is the best move in this position. There are moves such as bishop h5 or bishop f5. Now, again, um, we don't want to analyze this move. I'm just going to tell you that after the, one of these moves, white has an advantage. And you don't really want, need to know why and how, because white plays simply knight c3, followed by, after knight d7, g4, bishop g6, g5, and they hold on to extra pawn. We don't, you don't need to know it because this is the variation you don't, you cannot get if you go bishop to c8. So knight c3, knight d7. Now black wants to play knight b6 and get the pawn on d5 back. What they play normally is d4, knight b6, and after bishop b3, knight takes d5, and position is approximately equal. Now, what happens if white tries 
to hold on to an extra pawn by playing queen e2 in this position and after knight b6 queen to d3. Here is what we do. We just go g6 here. Now this is very good move. It multi-purpose move. We want to play bishop f5 and we also want to develop bishop on g7. What white does, they did uh, hold the extra pawn in its center. Uh, all, normally pawn hunting in the early stage of the game is very, very dangerous uh, enterprise. So what we do here, uh, after queen d3, we play g6, but queen on d3 stops developing of white's c1 bishop. So how can uh, uh, b wh b white play? Now bishop f5 is threatening. If they go g4, we go bishop g7, and now if they go knight e2, we simply castle, and this position is not good for um, it's not good for white. Now if if white plays b3, knight can simply take on d5, and you see white c3 knight is pinned, and if white wants to castle, we can simply take the bishop and let wife have an extra pawn by playing e6, d takes e, bishop takes e6. White's position is awful. Their king cover is, king is weak. Pieces are not developed. Black have pair of active bishop and open position. This position is not good for white at all. So this is briefly, we, I showed what happens if in center counter uh, white tries to hold on to extra pawn. That's not a good idea and black has a very good position. Again, e4, d5, e takes d, knight to f6, and we just went through continuations with bishop b5 check and also with c4. Now what's the main move here in this position? Are there any other moves? No, there is no other move but d4 here. Well, if white doesn't do any of this, bishop b5 check or knight f or c4, then they have to go d4. And we play knight takes d5 and white can go c4 or knight c3. Well, little exception is white can go also g3 here. But if g3 happens, that means if white plays g3, that means they, it's obvious that they don't want to get any advantage in the opening. We go g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, and after knight f3, uh, black simply castles. And position is very simple without any kind of advantage for white. So we don't want to look at this continuation. We want to see continuations where white really actively fights for initiative. So there is knight f3 and there is c4 move. There are two moves. Let's look at c4 and knight to b6. And now if white plays knight f3, very, very frequently it transposes to the variation where white plays knight f3 without c4. But the only difference here may be some other move besides knight f3, if they go c4 and knight c3. For example, here, black has instantly, black can immediately equalize position by playing pawn to e5, a very powerful move. And white has three choices, go knight f3, which obviously does not create any problems for black. They go e takes d and queen takes d4. You can tell that there is no advantage for white here after exchange of queens. So the other two continuations are d5 or d takes e. Now look at them. Let's look at them. d takes e uh, gives white an extra pawn but I would never recommend anyone to play like this for the white. We play queen takes d1. We do not get pawn back for black. 
If white wants to, white can hold on to an extra pawn, they're just going to get very bad position doing it. So king takes d1 or knight takes d1. That does not change the curse of development for black. Black does the same, play, plays mostly the same moves regardless which way white takes. Suppose king takes d1. Knight c6, we attack the e5 pawn. Suppose they go f4. On knight f3, we will go knight bishop g4. Suppose they go f4. Now we go bishop e6. Notice we're doing all with tempos, attacking the c4 pawn, b3. Now we castle with check. Now if king goes to c2, now we can go knight b4 check, or we can go bishop to c5, or we can even give bishop f5 check, and on king b2, knight b4, black has tremendous initiative. You can play this position a little bit by yourself with your computer program, and you will see how big of an initi initiative um, black has. Probably bishop c5 move, trying to go bishop d4 or knight d4. Black has very strong position. Actually, not much different if it's not much different if uh, white recaptures back with a knight. We go knight c6, same thing. We're attacking the e pawn. After f4, we go bishop e6, attacking the c4 pawn. And after b3, we castle along. All the same moves. We castle along and threatening bishop b4 check. Maybe bishop c5, f6. And after white takes rook to e8, you see all your pieces aiming to the center where you have tremendous advantage in development. White has to be careful after d4, knight takes d5, c4, knight b6. They have to play knight f3 in order to control black's e5. So knight f3 is the only correct move in this position. And what's the black's strategical idea in this opening? Black wants to develop pieces quickly and put as much pressure as they can on white's center. Bishop g4 is the move. And white goes bishop e2 or c5. c5 is another very interesting move. So let's go with bishop e2 first. After bishop e2, knight c6 is the most accurate move order. Uh, white allows, black allows white to go d5. What is going to happen after d5? Now d5 move was played against me a number of times. First time I remember um, uh, Judith Polgar, one of the best players alive. Well, she's a lady that played this against me, I played bishop takes f3, and she took with a g-pawn. Interestingly enough, this position happened in my one game against Yuri Polgar, but then, years and years ago, years and years after that, it happened in one game on a World Championship semifinals between Gaeta Kamsky and uh, Anand. I, uh, remem I remember that was a playoff position, playoff uh, match, match was in the playoff stage when I recommended Kamsky to play um, center counter since this was very unexpected for Anand and uh, Anand, one of the best theoreticians in the world he did not handle it correctly, and it was psychological factor, and uh, what, that's the what happened. Kamsky played knight c6, d5, and both of them recaptured. You know, in my game, Judith Polgar recaptured with a pawn, and Anand recaptured with a pawn. Now, what can happen if bishop takes on f3? That was played against me twice as well.
Now let's look at bishop takes f3 first, and then we're going to look at g takes f. After bishop takes f3, knight to e5, and uh, here white has two continuations. They have move b3, protecting c4 pawn, or they have moved bishop to e2. That was played against me twice. b3 I never had in a tournament. However, after b3, black has no problem. But black has to be very precise to what they do here. For example, move like knight takes f3 is not good because after queen takes f3, there is no comfortable way for black to conclude development. And this is not the position I would recommend you to play. So the correct move is g6. And on bishop b2, bishop g7, now white has a threat of knight takes f3. And if uh, black has a threat of knight takes f3. And if white goes knight c3 and black castles, black has fine position. And if white goes bishop e2, you can even go c6, and you see you have no problems at all. So um, b b3 was net not played. However, bishop e2 was played. And you see, obviously, black cannot capture on c4, because after bishop takes c4, knight takes c4, and queen a4 check, black loses the knight. And the correct move in this position is, of course, c6. Now, this is a very precise move, has to be done now. White is one move away by, like a bishop f4 or f4 from getting big advantage, driving black's e5 knight away. But c6 is a very interesting move, attacking two pawns at the same time. Black is attacking d5 pawn, and at the same time, they're attacking c4 pawn because pawn is on c6 and there will be no queen a4 check. So after c6, d takes c is not good continuation because black gets great position after queen takes d1, king takes d1, castle long, followed by knight takes c6. Or, or white may play bishop takes d1, then we can simply go knight d3 check, and on king d2, uh, we can just castle and have very good position as well. You can um, check this position if you want to. So the correct way to play for white in this position is queen to d4. That happened against me twice. And first time it happened to me in 1987 against Scandinavian uh, GM um, Ferdinand Hellers. It's interesting that I played Scandinavian against Scandinavian GM. And uh, after queen d4, knight to g6, Knight to c3, white is simply protecting the d5 pawn, black goes e5, queen to e4, c takes d, c takes d, and bishop to d6. Now, this position is uh, very easy to understand. Black wants to castle and go f5, after which they're going to have very, very powerful position. So white cannot allow this, and white played bishop b5 check, knight to d7, and now white castled. Black castled, and again, black is threatening to go f5. f5, as I explained already, cannot be allowed. Queen to f5, and knight to c5, Again, we want to play, you see the knight on d7 was hanging after knight to c5. I want to play knight e7 or knight h4 attacking the queen followed by f5. When queen moves, f5. That will be the ideal position for black. 
White has to prevent it. White played b4, knight to a6, and a3. Okay, now white isolated black's knight on a6. Knight does not stand well, but this knight on a6 has potential of coming back through c7 square. Knight e7 was played, and after queen h3, knight to c7. Attacking the bishop and attacking d5 pawn. Bishop d3 attacking h7 and f5 finally and black achieved everything they wanted. And after f5, bishop to g5 and now e4, bishop g5 creates the threat of bishop takes e7, queen takes e7 and bishop takes f5. At the same time, bishop g5 moves stops uh, uh, knight takes d5 because e7 knight is pinned. After bishop g5, black went e4, and after white played knight to e2, bis actually uh, after e4, white played bishop to c4, protecting the d5 pawn, h6, bishop to d2, and knight g6. Now you see black is much better because this knight may go to e5 and potential of creating king side attack on uh, white's king. Knight g6, white played f3, they want to break black's center. e takes f and g takes f. And this position is already very, very bad. For white, black's pieces are very active. Queen on h3 stands poorly. Bishop on c4 and bishop on d2, they are loose. After queen f6, now there is a threat of queen d4 check attacking most of white's belongings. Knight f -qu after queen f6, knight e2 has to be stopped. And here, uh, black is winning with b5 move. B5, now if bishop goes to B3, the, the idea of B5 is to play queen to B2 and attack both white's bishops. After B5, white played bishop C3, but now knight F4, this is an instant winner. Now white is attack, black is attacking white's queen and if bishop takes f6, then black wins a piece by playing knight takes h3, king g2, and now in any order they're going to pick up both of white's bishops. Black simply wins a piece. So after knight f4, uh, queen g3, and here, uh, simply b takes c wins a piece. Because when white plays bishop to f takes f6, knight takes e2, and white can resign. So after b takes c, uh, white resigned right away. And after knight takes e4, there will be queen takes c3. So there is no way white can stop loss of a piece, so they resign. Now this is one of the interesting continuations by black. One of the interesting examples how you can get very active position um, if white misplayed the opening. Center counter, this variation that we just looked at, cannot be misplayed by white. There are several different ways white can try for instant initiative and it may not end up well for them. E takes D, knight F6, D4, knight takes D5, C4, knight B6, knight F3, bishop G4, D, uh, bishop E2, knight C6, D5, bishop takes F3. 
So we just looked at bishop takes f3 continuation. So let's look at the continuation g takes f. First we look briefly what happened in the opening part of uh, my game against Judith Polgar. After knight e5, f4, she played f4, I went knight to e, e to d7. Um, then after b3, I played e6. d takes e, bishop to b4 check, bishop d2, bishop takes d2 check, queen takes d2, f takes e, bishop h5 check, g6, and after bishop f3, queen f6. Now, we don't have to go any farther than that. You can see clearly that black has no problem, and black has actually clear and maybe big advantage in this position. What happened later on, game went on, I had advantage most of the game, game ended in a draw, but this clearly does not represent any danger for black. Black is very fine here, and it's a little differently developed. Actually, you can uh, look at that game. It was played in 1989 in New York. Um, the other game was in the World Championship a candidate semifinal tournaments where I prepared. I was working with Greta Kamsky uh, like all day, uh, day before the, the, the final game of the match. It was playoff, it was a rapid game, like 25 minute game. And, um, uh, and he was very well prepared and he got good position, although he did misplay a little bit in the opening. E4, ED knight F6, same opening, D4 knight takes D5. Knight f3, bishop g4, bishop e2, slightly different move order, but same position, knight c6, c4, knight b6, d5, bishop takes f3, gf, knight e5, f4, knight e2, d7, and knight c3. That's exactly, well, Polgar played b3 against me, but he played knight c3. The move I would recommend here was would be e6. However, Kamsky played c6. I like this move less, but it's also an interesting move. d takes c, b takes c, bishop to e3, e6, and after queen c2, knight f6, bishop d3, uh, white plays bishop d3, to prepare castling long, which is illegal on this move. So uh, white played bishop d3, queen c7, and when white castled long, bishop e7, and after knight e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, f5. Now, this is interesting position, and I would say it's a very good position for black because now they castle, there is no attack by white on a king side, and white's bishops are not that active, and black has possibility of bishop f6 and rook b8 create attack on their own on a queen side. Also, the game was played in, in 1994, candidates tournament in India, candidates matches, black won, uh, black won this game very convincingly. And again, I would tell you that black can absolutely, even though black did misplay a little bit in the opening, they can absolutely be satisfied with the position they got in the early stage of the game in this opening. One of the possible continuations for white as well is, after ED, knight f6, d4, Knight takes d5, knight f3, bishop g4, c4, knight b6, is c5. And now um, the best move for black is knight from b6 to d7, not to d5, 
because after knight d5, white does have advantage by playing queen b3, attacking b7 pawn, and black has certain problems. For example, on bishop takes f3, queen takes b7 is possible, and black may be in trouble here, probably is in trouble. And if we go b6, then bishop c4 is possible, as well as knight to e5. So the best move is knight to d7. And now, probably the best answer for white is bishop c4, followed by e6, castling c6. Or maybe even bishop e7 first, followed by c6. Black has very solid position. They can go knight f6. Uh, later, and they have no problems. On queen b3, b6 is possible. So, white does not really have any serious advantage. But if white tries to get, take advantage of b7 square by playing immediate queen b3, then the best way to play for black is bishop takes f3, now, see, we're protecting the b7 pawn with the bishop on f3, so white has to recapture queen takes f3, and now knight to c6. Attacking d4 pawn, black has very good position. If white goes bishop e3, black can go e5, d5, knight d4, and black is doing fine. And if white goes d5 right away, then knight d4 is even stronger, because after queen e4, then black goes e5. And after d takes e, simply knight takes to e6. And black is doing fine. All white did made uh, too many moves with the queen in early stage of the game, and too many pawn moves as well. So. This continuation, I don't think, promises white any opening advantage. So, uh, anyway, I, I haven't had any problems with this variation. Now, after d4, knight takes d5, knight f3, bishop g4. Here is the key position, and the most common move here is bishop e2. Or it can be done c4, knight, b6, bishop, e2. So most of the time it's just a transposition. So white played bishop, e2. Well, white can play bishop, e2. And after knight, c6, white can castle. And black will go e6. Now we can have this position uh, as it is, as you see on the board, or position with h3, bishop, h5 played now or sooner. Anytime white could go h3 in earlier stage, in two, three moves ago, and black would have gone bishop h5. Now let's talk about this position. What is black's plan here? Black wants to develop quickly and have some kind of counterplay against white's center, especially if white plays c4. Now if white goes c4, black goes knight b6, and if white goes knight to c3 or bishop to e3 or even b3. Now, <laughs> let's look at this move. Bishop e3, suppose protecting d4 pawn. Here, <coughs> we get simplifications and position that favors black. After bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, and knight takes to c4. Queen to a4 or bishop takes c6. It's just transposition again. B takes c and queen to a4. Knight to b6. Queen takes c6 check. And queen to d7. This is the key position uh, in this variation. And in my opinion, black has a slight advantage here. You see, there is only one dark square bishop on both sides, and weak pawn on d4, and if uh, white moves queen f3, black can 
comfortably put the knight on d5, maybe not right away, but later, by playing bishop d6 and then c6, putting knight on d5 and castling. So this position has absolutely no advantage for white, and I would say slight advantage for black. Well, there are different ways to play this position for um, white. We just looked at one of the ways, which is c4, followed by bishop e3 or knight c3. But after c4, knight b6, white can also go b3. Now, this is an interesting move because it's not very good for black to play bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, and taking pawn on d4. Because the only way black now can take the pawn on d4 is with the knight. Obviously, you cannot take with a queen because then bishop takes c6 and black loses his queen. So if knight takes d4, bishop takes b7, and after rook to b8, um, white has a little advantage even if they play simply bishop to e3. This position is not the position I would recommend you to play. So I don't want to take on f3. So what black should do here in this position, simply play bishop to e7. And when white plays bishop to e3, protecting the pawn on d4, then we castle or even go a5 right away. Now, a5 before castling is very interesting positional idea. And here is the idea. If white plays knight to d2, then black plays a4. Uh, white cannot take advantage and make some breakthrough in the center because black's pieces are very well placed. Now, if white plays some neutral move, such as rook e1 or rook c1, then black may take a takes b or even later play a3. For example, castle now and followed by a3. I just want you to notice that after knight goes to b4, white is going to have very, very hard time protecting a2 pawn. Pawn on a3 is a very big positional um, uh, advantage for black. This, this particular position, black has big advantage after knight b4. So after a5, if white tries a3, not to allow a4 and a3, if white plays a3, then black can go a4. And if white goes b4, then bishop takes f3. And now white has a dilemma to play bishop takes f3 and give a pawn, give up a pawn on uh, c4, or take with g pawn and have very bad pawn structure on the king side. So this is an interesting position after a5. I actually like black in this position. If white goes knight c3 in this position, then you can maybe simply castle and later on go bishop f6, putting pressure on d4 pawn, or maybe bishop b4, or maybe even here, that for those who likes interesting position from strategical standpoint, you can go a4, which loses a pawn after c5, knight d5, and knight takes a4. If you think this position is worth a pawn, then go ahead and play it. I think it's a very interesting position. Black can simply castle and then go knight takes e3, or maybe bishop f6 and e5, but you don't have to sacrifice this pawn. The simple way to play is after knight c3, 
is to castle here and to prepare bishop b4 followed by a4 in the future or bishop f6 followed by queen e7 and rook d8. I don't think black black's position is any worse than in any other uh, major opening such as Sicilian, Caracan, French or something like that. So this is very interesting position for black and I would recommend it very strongly because I think this is unjustly forgotten opening for black, unjustly forgotten way to play this opening. So now let's look at a couple of more um, continuations for white. As a matter of fact, there is a way preferred, preferred way to play by strong players for white. Even then, I, I, I don't think white has any kind of advantage. This is preferred way to play for white. And the reason why it's preferred way, because it's the safest way. h3, bishop h5, rook e1, or maybe even c3. Now, white does not want to go c4, and therefore black is not going to have active counterplay against white's center. What I would like to do then is to develop my bishop to d6. And here is the positional idea of this move, bishop d6. Black is going to, white is going to go rook e1, black castles, suppose white goes knight d2. Notice one thing here, uh, that white has some space advantage. What black has Black has faced this advantage. There were too many pieces on the board. And when are a lot of pieces on the board, space advantage may be very significant. Because when you don't have much space, you have a problem maneuvering and playing your pieces. When it becomes crowded. So the idea of bishop d6 is that we want to go now bishop f4. And regardless where white goes, for example, knight to e4, we can go queen e7 and rook d8 and maintain the development, maybe even a6 to prevent bishop b5. And this is a good position. Well, this is very safe position for black. You see, black is going to exchange dark square bishops no matter what white does. If um, white go, uh, by the way, c4 is not very good move because it does not win a piece. We could just take on c1, and when white plays c takes d, then we play e takes d. You see, black's bishop on c1 is hanging, but so is white's knight on e4. So uh, c4 doesn't work. So what white might do in this position white may go maybe simply knight g3 and we're gonna go bishop g6 we want to keep the bishop on g6 it's a very good piece and bishop takes f4 knight takes f4 and if white goes here bishop f1 or bishop c4 now here what i want to point so white has maybe microscopical advantage but after queen f6 and rook d8 there are no problems for black. No problems. Black is has every piece active and they have potentials for putting some pressure on d4 by rook d8, rook e8, and e5. So this position is absolutely acceptable for black. And this is what uh, will happen if you played someone on a highest level that's how they would play. And why, why would they play so, so um, a safe way and so conservative way if there is a concrete way of getting an advantage? The reason is that there is no way of getting clear advantage in any on, of the um, 
sharp continuations. So this is also satisfactory. And the last point I want to make here, one more variation I want to go through is e4, d5, ed, knight f6. Now, after d4, knight takes d5, bishop b5 check. We looked at this bishop d7, and now bishop e2. Now, the difference is now black has to go bishop f5, because bishop cannot stay on uh, d7. And after knight f3, we will go e6, castle, knight c6. Now, if white wants to play c4, they got to go a3 first. Because on, after c4, knight b4, and knight a3, black simply develops bishop to e7, bishop to f6, and they have very good position. But if white plays a3, then we go bishop e7, c4, knight b6, knight c3, we castle, and after bishop e3 and bishop g4, position pretty much repeats. Now white has to do something against bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, and knight takes c4. And so if they go in this position, b3, then we're going to go bishop f6, and we have position very much similar to one we looked um, in the main variation. So I am convinced that playing this opening is very, very safe. If you play it correctly, you have to be very precise in the way you're playing it, and have all your ideas straight, and move orders too. You're going to get as good of an opening as you can get, as good of a position as you can get playing any other major opening. So I would recommend you to try it. And if you run into some problems, be my guest and contact me.